I often see naive physics students post that photons don't experience time on Facebook. But I was surprised when Don Lincoln did it on his Fermilab YouTube channel and went about disproving Einstein's theory of special relativity, of course, without realizing that he was doing so. And I will link the video below and I'll use a short clip, but I recommend that you watch the full video at some point. So what he concludes, as do the students, is photons don't experience time or distance in Einstein's special relativity. But in reality, photons have wavelengths and frequencies, so every wavelength and frequency they're experiencing distance and time. So there's a major contradiction. Special relativity is not consistent with physical reality. So in relativity, as Don explains, the relativistic term gamma goes to one over zero when the velocity equals the speed of light. So it becomes undefined. So what that basically means is, and he says it, special relativity is invalid for photons or anything else traveling at the speed of light. It doesn't work because it's undefined. We can only use an approximation to try to understand what we get. So I'll let Don explain in the video. It's a well-known feature that in Einstein's theory of relativity, different observers will experience time differently. Specifically, it's often claimed that an observer moving quickly will experience time more slowly than one that is stationary. This phenomenon is called time dilation. What I want to talk about here is whether a photon experiences time. If it's true that a moving clock ticks more slowly than a stationary one and a photon moves at the speed of light, is it possible that the photon is moving so fast that no time is experienced? If you're standing somewhere, perhaps waiting for the bus, and you see a photon go flying by at the speed of light, what happens with gamma? Well, we can put in for velocity, uh, the velocity of the photon, which is the speed of light, which we always write as c. We can see that we get c over c, which is equal to 1. And with that, we see that the gamma reduces to 1 over 0, which is undefined. So that's the key point number one. The equations of relativity don't work for objects traveling at the speed of light. That means that relativity theory also fails for photons. The nearest star is about four light years away, so a person on Earth will say it takes four years to get there. How much time will a person traveling at 90% the speed of light take? Roughly a year and nine months. How about at 99% the speed of light? A little over half a year. 99.9% .9 the speed of light? About two months. We can continue this trend at the staggeringly fast speed of 99.9 .9 more nines the speed of light. It will take a bit shy of 10 minutes. From this, we can conclude that in the limit of going at the speed of light, that a photon will experience zero time. So that's pretty wild. Taken to an extreme, this means that a photon can cross the entire universe in zero time. And it gets weirder. Not only does relativity predict that times will shrink, but it also predicts distances will too. A fast-moving object will shrink distances in the direction of motion, although not side to side. If we made a cylinder that stretched from here to the next star, we'd see it as four light years long, while the photon would see it as a circle with no thickness. Again, taken to the extreme, a photon views the distance traveled as it crosses the universe as having no thickness at all. In a sense, as far as the photon is concerned, it's everywhere along its path at once. So as Don says, photons cross the universe in zero time, and they're everywhere all at once. Yeah, that doesn't sound like physics. It shouldn't sound like physics to you either. So Don didn't take the next step to explain that in special relativity, photon wavelengths equal zero. They don't experience any time and distance. So their wavelengths are zero. While their frequencies are infinite, 
But since energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency, that means their energy is infinite. And every single photon is the same. There are no individual frequencies, wavelengths, and energies. There's no medium because under special relativity, under this undefined special relativity, all the photons would have the same energy, wavelength, and frequency. Infinite, infinite, and zero for the wavelength. And the speed of light becomes undefined as well because the wavelength and the frequency are zero times infinity, which is undefined. Because normally zero times anything is zero and infinity times anything is infinity. So what happens when zero times infinity? We don't know how to define it. So, and that's a huge problem. You have run this thing around in a circle, tested the logic of special relativity, and you can't even get the speed of light extracted correctly. You go from a real speed of light, three times 78 meters per second, to undefined. That's the Einstein theory of special relativity for you. So in order to make relativity work, we have to go back to realizing that photons must have wavelengths and frequencies. And so they can't have any matter moving at the speed of light. You need to have a model for a photon in which basically nothing moves or moves so slow that it's classical. And that's where I go back to the de Broglie model of the photon that I like, where because there's a rotating electromagnetic wave, each half wavelength rotating 180 degrees, that means that there must be a dipole in the middle. And de Broglie realized that dipole would be a quantum electron positron pair, a Dirac type particle pair. And if you do that, each individual particle pair is rotating as well as those in the field, but they're not going anywhere. They just do their rotation thing. They're replaced by the next one in line and that's replaced by the next one in line, but each individual one's not moving. The only thing that's moving is the energy. The energy is propagating. And then, okay, how do we fix this? We need to have a theory of special relativity that actually works. And the key to that is we have to understand that space doesn't contract or time dilate. This whole thing that Don Lincoln went through shows that that theory fails. So instead, the wavelengths and frequencies of photons must change because of changes in the dielectric, the permittivity and permeability change. Or as I like to talk about, they change because the quantum van der Waals torque changes. The quantum van der Waals torque in this case increases when a body moves through the quantum field. And the increasing torque slows clocks and shortens wavelengths. So we need a new version of special relativity, one that actually avoids all of these contradictions and nonsense and works with the quantum ether and a viable physical model of the photon. And it's pretty straightforward if you follow what I'm saying about it. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and you can like it, share it with your physicist friends who need to know this, and subscribe for more as I come out with more of my videos. And if you'd like to read a little bit about special relativity and general relativity, I do talk about it briefly in my book, The Zero Point Universe, and you, my other books are available as well. And I'd like to thank my Patreon, PayPal, and Super Thanks supporters. You helped me out a lot, so thanks. And thanks to everyone for watching.